So I thought I'd give you a bit of background first and explain what has happened. So, <laughs> I mean, obviously we've had Christmas and New Year and that's obviously disturbs people. But um, the, the real things that have been going on are a bit more drastic than that. So I was doing a series of 11 videos. I don't know if anyone remembers that. And number 10 was this one, the hurricane. And number 11 was the FA-18, which has been newly reintroduced back into the sim. Well, the sim game with the... Um, was it World Update 7? I've lost track of stuff nowadays and it's just got a bit blurry. Um, but the Anniversary Edition released us with some new models, one of which was the FA-18 from the old um, FSX one, which is great. I love it. So I was the last two was this one, and then it was the FA eighteen. The FA eighteen, I took and uh, I did a couple of that, and I took it up and down. Um, the the Grand Canyon. So this one was supposed to come out before that, and that just oh, it's been a nightmare. <laughs> Not a nightmare of anything bad, but a nightmare because. Every time I just get to do a flight, start to do the recording, get to start editing it, and just as I start getting towards the end of editing, there'd be a new version released, and it would address the things that I'd said in the previous videos. It's like, oh no, I've got to do it again. So I'd do it again. In the end, I did it four times. I recorded it four times. This is the fifth time I'm going to have recorded it. And it's been a bit of a weird one, because my computer exploded before Christmas. I had to get a new power supply and a new motherboard. And that I think the power supply arrived on uh, Christmas Eve, and I went away for two days. So I got back on Boxing Day, and the motherboard arrived on Boxing Day. So I've been a bit rebuilding the PC, but I had a little bit of an issue with... Um, I lost my Windows key. So this is a Windows 8 that was updated to 10 and they give you a digital key. And when you replace the motherboard, it creates a new device in your Microsoft account. And it copies the key from the old device, which doesn't exist anymore because you've changed the motherboard, to the new one. And it updates it. It's no big deal, it's quite easy to do. Only a certain Muppet called me deleted the wrong one because when I went in there there were two of them called Chaos PC because there was my old one and the new one I hadn't given it a new name so um, thinking they were in chronological order which they weren't I deleted the wrong one so I deleted my Windows key so for four or five days I had a watermark down here saying this is an unregistered version of Windows please you know you need to register it or buy another key or whatever I didn't want to make videos with that in the corner, so I just persisted for a while. Microsoft tried for a few hours to try and fix it. They couldn't fix it. And I had to buy a new key, which wasn't that bad. It was, I think it was 13 euros in the end from some Norwegian company. So that's all back together again. Motherboard's in, everything's fine and everything's working. And then I got very ill and it turns out I had COVID. So I caught COVID probably on the 28th or... 27th of December and what happened was when I came back home on Boxing Day I'd been flooded and I had to have a heating engineer out to look at the heating because I'd got all ex the, the box had shorted out the control box so they had to come and replace that and the first one came and had to disable it and then the next one came either the next day or a couple of days later and one of those two guys gave me COVID because I've not met anyone else I've just been in all, all the time so yeah, so I've had COVID for just over a week and I've never felt so bad in my whole life. It is just horrendous. The feeling you get when you just can't breathe and no matter how much you try and breathe, your lungs are going, it feels like they are, your chest going up and down and there's just no air going in your lungs because it's just filled with fluid. It, it's horrendous. And you try and cough the fluid up and it, it's like you cough it up and most of it goes back down again when you breathe in again, so you can't cough it all up. It chokes you, and oh, it's absolutely horrendous. So for three days, I was just laid in bed, and it was just... Anyway, 
It looks like I'm over it now, so we're gonna we're gonna get on, and I'm finally gonna get this hurricane video done. And that is, <laughs> when I went online to check they hadn't released a new video and a new video, a new version. Imagine my horror when I found out he'd actually released five more versions <laughs> since the last video I made. He released one on New Year's Day, I think. And then there were four more, like 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, were all released between the 1st and the 6th of January. And there were little minor cosmetic changes, like I think he changed the handles down here on some of the stuff. But, um, yeah. So, we get onto this model now, and the Hurricane. And this is a wonderful model. I absolutely love it. This is F.S. Adney doing his stuff, and at his best. And then, um, one of the reasons he's had so many releases is because he's been listening to people in the comments on flightsim.to and little things like someone mentioned about these diamond shaped pieces of reinforcement that hold the ribbing together in the canopy and he's put those in. I mean they're not quite ac completely accurate, I mean there should be more rivets there but hey it's you know it is, it is beautiful and the detail on the cockpit the detail has just gone up so much in these last versions that he's done. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in a little bit of video, and I'll sh from the previous recordings I made, and you can compare the cockpit then to the cockpit now. Just little things like look down here, look at the control handles, look at the quality of the things. This picture here, you couldn't even see that in the first few versions. That was just uh, all blurred out and. The dials are amazing. It's just absolutely fantastic. The, the detail is superb. And I already know it's going to be at least an 8 out of 10. So the first one I gave, I think it was a 10. And then the second one I gave 8.5 because there were a few difficulties. The um, flaps and the wheels didn't seem to always go down when you press the buttons. They would 66. Two thirds of the time they'd go down or up. And then two thirds of the time they wouldn't. So... One one time I recorded one of the versions, I had to record it four times taken off because the wheels just wouldn't go up. And then eventually they just went up and then they wouldn't come down. So, yeah, just one of those things. So it was a bit hit and miss and I'm, I marked it down to 8.5. So hopefully it's going to be at least an 8. And if we can, we're going to get you know give it a, a good old fly around and see how we get on. So first of all, I'm just going to go and do a circuit and then land again. And uh, after I've had our customary look around the cockpit and see what works and what doesn't. Now I noticed that a lot of the things don't work when you try and use them with the mouse. Though they do work um, in, in actuality. As you can see, the switches down there work. Okay, so um, one of the things we've had to do is, I've already flown this of course, so I already know what one of the problems is, so we'll, first of all we'll deal with, I'll give you a quick look around the cockpit from the other versions, and then we'll get on to getting this in more detail. So my final test of the day. And is the final test of this week, which is number 10 or 11 now. This is a beautiful aircraft. And we're going back to World War II. And it is the Hawker Hurricane. I believe this is Mark 1. As with most aircraft of the era, it's pretty basic. Most people know about the Battle of Britain would say, yeah, it, it wasn't the Spitfire that saved England and Britain. 
It was this aircraft. It was the Hurricane. I imagine there were many more Hurricanes shot down than, than Spitfires existed. It was the workhorse of the Air Force. So let's take a quick look around the cockpit. So as you can see there have been quite a lot of changes and the detail in here now is quite incredible. So let's go through the first issues that we had. So when I came to try and fly it, there was no throttle. And we know that this is an issue from the, well some people seem to be calling it SU-8. But it isn't SU-8, it's SU-7 with an update. So it's an update to SU-7. And what's happened is um, the, the sim the sim slash game is improving, and it's being expanded. So when issues come to the right, the the techies try and fix them. So one of the things that we've had is multiple engines, and that's been an issue because some people have got like me just one one a throttle axis, and that throttle axis has to cope with four engines. And others have four throttle axes and they have independent engines, or they would like to have. But the sim game didn't have that in them, so they've had to introduce four new sets of throttle controls. As well as the basic one. So we've got a basic one which controls all of them. And then we've got individual ones for each of the one engines 1 to 4. And also things like if you've got buckets or you've got afterburners then you also need to have throttle not to 100 and then more than 100 and less than 100 so all these little tiny features had to be included into the sim game and that's caused issues for the older aircraft and aircraft that were modelled previously that were using a different way of making the engine work and throttle up and down so what I've had to do is I've had to go into the settings And if we look at my old throttle plan, this is the one I've been using up until to, well this afternoon when I made this video. Hello, just do what you're told. What's going on here then? There we go. So previously we just had this one throttle axis. And that was it. What throttle axis do you want to use? I'm going to use this one on my slider controller there. It's that simple. That's all there was. Nothing else. But now we've got each of the individual engines, one to four, and they've all got their own little settings. So for this particular model, if I use that one and use the general throttle, which is this one here, it doesn't work on this Hurricane. So I've got another profile, which is I've just named as January. Oops. And that has no throttle axis basic one. And it's just got one for uh, engines one and two. Now, I, I did have it at just engine one and that, that was working fine. But the notes on flightsim.co said to set it to 1 and 2, so I've just set it to 1 and 2, just in case it needed to be on 1 and 2. Obviously it only has one engine as far as I'm concerned. But he did mention that he'd got both banks of exhaust to work, so maybe there's some weird thing going on there, I don't know. So I've just followed what he said and I've set them both up to the same. So they're all set, if I was to set all four engines, they'd all be set to the same thing. All four engines will be set to joystick L axis Z because that's the axis there. And when I push my throttle forwards, that changes these values. And of course it's backwards because, yeah, that makes sense. So I have to reverse them. So. 
That's all working now. They haven't changed, have they? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay, so um, now when I move the throttle, the throttle moves, yay! Of course, it's got a bit gloomy. It's not very good. So we're going to go for a little fly. We're going to take off. We're going to fly to the channel, do a circuit issue, and come back again. So a quick look around the cockpit to show you the features of what does and doesn't work. So first of all, the hood. You can push the hood back. Whee! Uh, I, it doesn't change the engine volume, unfortunately, which is a bit of a weird one, but yeah, it's great. So, uh, can't, shoot, can't send the fuel yet. He did say he's going to change that at some point. And the only other controls that seem to work are the throttle, which doesn't work on the mouse, only seems to work on the joystick. And then the switches and the light. And that very out of place modern looking fabric so you would just ignore that. Yeah, this did used to have two of those black balls on there and two sticks, so I don't know what's happened. I assume that they were for left and right, but it's just got one there. The stick is non-removable as far as I can see. Ah, oh, we're kind of just the... oh, that's good. Yeah, these dolls are amazing now compared to what they used to be like. Really, really amazing. And I do like the little information plaque there, that's quite nice. So yeah, apologies for my voice. You may get the occasional sniff, um, but that's basically because I've got COVID still. So let's get it started. I'm not exactly sure what it is that we're missing there, but something isn't set correctly for us to be able to start the engine. And the button isn't isn't making it work, so I have no idea what's going on. The, that does I mean that's lean and that's rich so it's set to root yeah very strange so we'll have to start on the um, emergency start button which is the the old control e Okay, well, uh, yeah, so we got that started. Now, I'm, I'm, 
Okay, I'm not going to mark it down for that because I think it did used to start on the switch no problem at all. So I'm guessing that this is something to do with the weird way that we've got the new throttle setups. So we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm sure we'll sort it out in the end. And for now, we'll just go with a near yeah, whistle at eight or more. <laughs> so while it's warming up, we'll have a quick look outside. So as you can see, it's still got a bit of heat wave there on the old uh, exhaust, which is great. Props seems to be spinning nicely. Oh no, I wanted to show that. Oh yeah. Oh no, I need to stop the engine there. Just, I'll try and do that. I love the attention to detail. I just wanted to show you these. That is just really nice little bits of detail these got on there. It's great. And it's, uh, yeah. Lovely. God, I've got a big head. Sheesh. Okay, so we're back up and running again. Ground hurry one with kilo request taxi for takeoff touch and go. Hurry one taxi two and hold short of runway two one via taxiway Bravo. Contact tower on one one nine or decimal three eight when ready. Taxi two and hold short runway two one via taxiway Bravo hurry one. So, just in case he releases another version or two in the next day or three, this is version 1.15 of Epis Adney's Hurricane Mark 1, from, uh, downloaded from flightsim.to. aware that the um, a lot of these freeware aircraft have a tendency to slide a lot to the right or left on takeoff and we have to give it a quite a lot of rudder to counteract any of that nonsense so we'll have to watch out for that once we start to take off 
We're getting very overcast, and we're getting a bit worried VFR's going to lose. But um, hopefully, we'll retain VFR for now. It's not very far to the coast, and we should be able to see it from the coast anyway. So. So brakes, brakes were a nightmare last time, just face planted the aircraft straight into the ground. Brakes are working great now. It no longer wants to smash itself in the face, it's great. Tower hurry one ready at runway 21 touch and go. Hurry one QNH tree, zero decimal tree, six winds one eight nine -er at two zero. Left touch and go approved. Cleared for takeoff runway two one. Cleared for takeoff runway 21, hurry one. Clear left and clear. So our first test will be, does the gear go up? Sweet, it certainly does. It's definitely a lot more difficult to trim up than it was previously. And there seems to be some weird mismatch between throttle position and engine noise. So I've only just put a slight amount of throttle and that's gone straight to full throttle. If I now go full throttle it goes to emergency war power then cuts back again. So I definitely need some tweaking because the trim on that is ridiculous. So we'll continue with our left hand circuit and try and get a good bit of a landing. It's very difficult to gaze throttle and um, engine noise. So that's no throttle and the engine and if I give a slight amount of throttle the engine's going to go throttle to full power. There we go, full power and I've only given it 10% throttle. But hey ho, it works, it flies, it looks great. Let's have a look from the outside. Flies great, looks great, marvellous little thing. 9 out of 10. Easily 9 out of 10. So 
So let's head back towards the aerodrome. exactly as it should do. Beautiful. As with this bird, it's always this and the Spitfire, they're the nightmares to land, so let's see if we can land it without exploding. We always get this slide starting on and there's nothing we can do about it, it seems. I don't know if I was going too fast. I'll have a look at that and replay anyway. So there we go. I mean, failing my useless attempts at landing, that's a definitely 9 out of 10. Let me think for a minute. Does it deserve 9.5 out of 10? No, I think we'll stick at 9 out of 10 for now. I'm going to mark it down a half mark because of the engine weirdness and another half mark because of the way that um, only some of the things work inside the cockpit on the mouse. Uh, I still need to feel like the mixture should be able to be um, controlled by the mouse. Although I'll, I guess I should try the keys, I'll find out which keys they are and give that a go as well. But for now that's 9 out of 10. <laughs> 